So today we're going to talk about a uh, park in a bridge in this uh, in this time lapse. I'm going to show you and describe the way that uh, we can model this with Rhino and Grasshopper. We're going to use Rhino for uh, the part of the geometry here, and also for the net we're going to use uh, Grasshopper. Uh, again, this is designed by uh, dealers Cafidio plus Renfro. Uh, the location of this pedestrian and cyclist bridge is in Colorado Springs. And now let's go to Rhino and let's see how this can be done. Okay, so I started here with thinking about what is the best way to approach a modeling bridge like this. As you can see, I put a couple of images directly in my Rhino viewport. And now I'm kind of thinking what would be the best approach to a mirror this design because as you can see uh, the bridge has the same design on one side and on the other side so i was deciding here uh, what would be like that mirror line or mirror plane that are gonna mirror everything around and i decided this to be that line that you can see in the middle uh, and now i'm kind of fixing i'm trying to uh to get all of the lines right according to the image of course this image is not 100 correct because it's not autocad drawing so I'm kind of eyeballing it and then also from the side view i'm uh, using uh some of these um images as as references to have some reference lines in my 3d uh, environment and uh now i have the sense of what the height of the bridge would be and here i'm trying to connect i'm trying to to create that uh that mirror plane with the shape of the of the bridge that i saw from the from the side view and at this point, uh, I have the mirror plane. I know that everything that we do here, we're gonna mirror from there. And uh, now we're trying to uh, create this first first part with sub Ds. It's really important that we start with one side first. So I tried to, you know, start with four planes only. You can see here that I changed a couple of a uh, couple of edges, and now I'm just modifying that surface to fit. Uh, onto that plane here i'm adding a couple of more uh, edges so that we can subtract some of those surfaces where we have that uh, that void right so i'm now uh, adding a little bit more uh, definition i'm kind of modifying uh, things as i go along and here i'm deleting these these inner parts and i'm modifying uh, the, the edges according to this to this extrusion that i made from the side view and I'm trying to fit this uh, as close as possible to that side image. And I'm trying to uh, as well mirror this on the opposite side so that I can see if everything is going to fit correctly or if we need to modify something here. I realized that I actually need some space there. So I'm kind of slightly changing the, uh, the, the position uh, because I need some space in that middle mirror plane and I'm moving some of those vertices so that we can create that uh, that uh, connection between these two parts. Uh, the, the, the thing here is that I'm going to mirror the, the main, the main uh, geometry, but then uh, I also need to create a separate geometry that's going to connect these two, uh, these two mirrored uh, geometries with sub Ds. So here I'm kind of at the end of the modification phase for the sub Ds. I mirrored it once again to check to see if, if uh, everything is, is going to be fine. And uh, here I'm uh, slightly modifying the shape where this curve is, is, is happening. I'm trying to get that perfect, uh, perfect circle that we see here. And at this point, I'm thinking about, okay, creating those, those side, uh, side uh, panels. And I'm trying to see what would be the best uh, proportion based on the images that we have. I'm also scaling them on the top so you can kind of see that uh, in the base plan they're not exactly you know in the same uh say position so one of those is slightly moved uh than the other but at the same time they're both mirrored uh in the correct uh, position when we use that mirror plane that we created so here i'm just slightly modifying the connections i'm trying to uh, make sure that all of these vertices from sub d's are you know some of them are not, not not necessary so i'm kind of deleting them and trying to fit everything so that once we do the mirror uh everything is gonna fit into place and it, it took a lot of time here because um you know when you kind of do this kind of work uh when you mirror constantly sometimes you need to modify things um 
uh, additionally. And this what this is what happened to me. I'm trying to also keep the the edges sharp where they need to be and smooth where they need to be. Uh, and now here, uh, this is the, the 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 time when I want to create that uh, connection between those mirrored mirrored geometries. And here I'm creating some sort of uh, detailing. I'm trying to uh, make this a little bit more interesting with uh, additional details on the top. And this uh, this middle geometry that I just created was is going to be separate from the overall sub D sub D, sub D uh, geometry. And now I'm at this point I'm I'm putting that inner geometry. So up until now I was doing only the the outside. Now I'm now I'm kind of moving on the inside and I'm trying to connect. Uh, connect this bridge. I'm trying to, uh, to see what the thickness is and how we can actually create that thickness on both sides. Um, I realized that uh, I had to add some additional edges and that as you can see when you model with sub -Ds, there's never like the you know the best approach right away. So sometimes uh, well, in this case, I had to uh, revise my design and I had to move it slightly on the inside so that everything is going to fit uh, perfectly. Here you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm trying to, to guess that thickness. So it's exactly as, as we have in the project. And um, once, once, I create, once I create all of these connections, then it's going to be easy just to mirror this. And here is the fun part. This is the, the middle edge that's going to connect these two parts. Up until now, I thought that I can create this by just using one sub D side, but it turns out that this uh, connection needs to be one single sub D. So I couldn't up until this point, I thought I could just mirror things, but then I realized here, okay, now we need to connect both sub D's into one single sub D so that the design makes, you know, perfect sense. And here I'm connecting and I'm adding some additional edges that, um, that are going to make this design really uh, you know fit uh, the, the 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 actual project you can see that i have a couple of problems with creases along the way so oftentimes i used uh remove crease and add crease when needed and here i'm kind of you know modifying those edges as well and at at this point you know i realized okay let's connect everything together there's no point of mirroring anymore and you can see here that i'm bridging i'm always bridging these elements and modifying the the edges so that we have sharp edges were needed and uh, once once this is done i'm gonna modify the top part as well because i realized okay now this top part that i created previously isn't gonna work now because now it's not completely mirrored so i had to redo it uh, one more time and at this point i'm kind of getting close to the to the end i'm thinking about creating that base so i'm using curve boolean i'm thinking about the thickness of the of the base plan i'm thinking about okay where this is going to end and what's going to be the, the edge i did a couple of splits and then also did a couple of sweep uh sweep two uh commands to kind of connect those those surfaces and then i decided that i need to add a little bit more thickness to the uh to the uh base plan so i'm kind of doing this uh at the moment i'm also connecting uh, using the sweep too and uh, now I have the full let's say floor so to say of the bridge done and at this point uh, I decided okay now let's do a little bit of fence let's create that fence you can see how I actually extruded I extruded the line uh, and then I transformed this line into sub D so it's a sub D surface and then uh, once I had the design that I wanted then I can uh, use the split command to split that uh, surface into a uh, poly surface and at this point I'm just deciding okay how many how many of these uh, uh, fence uh, fence elements I need and this is I'm just using offset curve on surface here to to create those surfaces extruding them modifying them slightly mod uh, and then adding that uh, that rail at the top so uh, now here I'm thinking about creating the the rail for the top area and this is the rail that's gonna hold that net that you saw at the beginning so i have to create two rails i use the same technique that i used to create the uh the fence and um once once i created these these two uh kind of connector parts then i just created one single surface 
uh, and the surface later on was uh, modified with Grasshopper to create that net that you saw. So at this point, you know, this is uh, this is like the final the final um, modeling process. I just I just modified that surface to fit um, that shape that we saw on the on the images, and uh, from this point. Uh, once I was happy with with how the surface would look like, I think I used patch command to, to create that surface. And uh, once we had the, the surface created, then it's all about just converting it to the uh, to grasshopper script that's gonna have that uh, that effect. So uh, now uh, that was that was the modeling modeling part. If you're interested in checking out the whole two hour video with my personal comments and that additional part that shows how to create a net in Grasshopper, you can watch it on our Patreon page. And if you join us there, you will also get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files. Take care.